Hey, Tate here, and welcome back to another video. Today's video is a tutorial video where I'm going to show you how I do my base colors, another way that you can do it, and about clipping layers and how they work. So let's get to it. So over here on the right, we've got my line art layer and my sketch. My sketch layer is hidden. That's what it looks like. So we want to create a new layer underneath the line art layer. So we'll come down here to new raster layer. And there's our layer. Then we'll come over to the tools on the left and we'll choose the auto select tool. Make sure that it refers to other layers and generally I have it on select additionally just means you can select multiple areas without getting rid of the other selections. So we'll come to our drawing and you want to select on the outside of the drawing of your line art. So just click anywhere on the outside and all these dotted lines should appear. From here, I go to Selection and Invert Selected Area. So now you shouldn't see the, the dotted lines around the, like, the very edge of the canvas. Then I will come over to the Bucket Tool and we'll just fill it up with a mid-grey colour and you should see that. So we can unselect it by clicking Ctrl D or Selection up here and Deselect. So now we have the inside of it coloured. From here, I create a new folder, which is down here, new layer folder, and I'll put all my colours in here. So we'll make a new layer, do our skin first, and I usually fill up with the G pen, so choose a skin colour. Because this is the bottom layer, you don't have to stay in the lines. See, like, I'm going outside of the grey, it doesn't matter. That's a very yellow skin tone though, let's fix that off a bit. But yeah, it doesn't matter going out because I will set this folder to a clipping layer eventually, which will bring it back inside our outside lines. So, create another layer for the hair. I have a lot of layers in my work. But with this one, you have to be careful of going over the skin, which I have already in this little corner. And generally, you just go around the outlines like so. Which takes a little bit of time. The other way that I'm going to show you is a little bit quicker, but I find it a little less reliable half the time but normally I'd go around the outside of the lines and then fill the center there's still usually little yellow gaps as you can see there well gaps where there's no color so I'll finish doing the hair this way in time-lapse and I will get back to you soon We've coloured in the hair, let's do the other technique as well. So here, back to our line art layer, we want to select set as reference layer up here. So now this will be our reference layer. We'll go back to our G tool, we want to click so it does not exceed the line of reference layer. This setting wasn't originally here for me, so I have to go to settings, anti-overflow, and I if you click on the eyes on the left, like it, it was like this originally, it'll make those settings visible over to the left. So now that we've got that there, I also clicked area scaling. It'll make it just a little bit bigger and go to the edge of the lines. Um, it's also got this interesting thing where it says color margin over here. Um, if you 
don't like if there is a small gap in the line it won't go out of that gap I always fill up all the lines so in my line art so we've got our next layer we'll do the top so we'll choose the pink color that this top sort of is Go slightly more peachy so we want the pen brush to be sort of big and this will refer to our um, yeah, do not exceed line of reference layer so it will not exceed the lines of our line art layer that we set as a reference. That's not the top. So if we go in here, it's staying in our lines. If you go with a smaller brush and go outside, it does that. So you still have to be careful but it's a lot easier than doing what I did just before and painstakingly going through and doing every little line. Like, see, there's a t slight little line in there, but oh, we left, we got a little bit in there. So we can do that with the skirt as well. So same settings, skirt colors yellow, and it will stay in their lines. I'm going purposely out of the ones at the bottom of the skirts just because I know and this is the bottom of the skirt but it definitely makes everything just a little bit quicker since trying to make our time that we work on stuff like I can't think of the proper word right now our workflow we want to make our workflow quicker I'll add the brown to the belt as well so this is definitely something that helps with that let's go into the tail now Tail and ears, actually. Plus this. Also, naming all your layers really help. It helps me a lot. So, come over here. Let's see, it's probably not going to do those little areas that well. Ears are gonna be. Oh, I didn't fill out the line art for the actual stripes. Whoops. We can fix that. This gap is too big for it, so it will go out of it. But yes, I'm gonna have to put quickly fill in those stripes. Let's turn that off. Go back to our line art. Normally I'd do this in a different colour if I was doing a more detailed piece, but since this is a chibi, like a very simplified chibi, colouring them in. Okay, so that's our tail and ears. I'll do the fluff as well. Make it light colour. Tick our do not exceed the line reference layer again. So happy I rediscovered this tool. I actually forgot about it for a while and already just making this tutorial it's made colouring in the base colours so much quicker. Now all that's left is the socks and the shoes. Whoops I can't type socks. Which are a slightly more purple colour. Oh, that's really saturated. I don't want it that saturated. It actually feels too dark too. A bit lighter. There we go. That's the color I want. The main problem, like this um, tool, sort of has, is that getting into corners sometimes it can be a bit tricky. Do our boots as well, even though you can only see one of the boots. Come on. 
like yeah just there uh, you can see I'm gonna have to turn setting up just get those small little bits okay and back to the socks while we've got that turned off because our socks are stripy oh this is another thing you can do because I forgot to do it just then you can lock the transparency of a layer it's very similar to a clipping group so now I can't go outside of this area on the socks because I set the lock transparent pixel so we'll do our stripes on the socks and on the other side as well and we've got a necklace as well I'm gonna untick that and I'm gonna do it on the same layer because purple because her flat her feather is purple so there's all our base colors done so this is when I set the folder to clipping and there not outside of the lines so that's pretty much two ways to do base colors the second way is a lot quicker don't but because you don't really go out of the lines at all but now I will show you clipping layers as you can see I've already made this folder a clipping layer to my base layer that I did which just makes it so that I cannot go outside of what is on the base layer so I'll just make a couple of new layers so if we do a circle up here then make a layer on top of it and make it a clipping group then we'll choose a different color I can't draw outside of the circle on this layer because it is clipped to this I can only draw on the circle go in a different color so yes that is clipping layers I generally use it for my base layers so I don't go outside of the outside lines and then when I go to shading as well so we'll go to skin new layer it doesn't really matter if it's a skin layer as much because it's underneath everything but I'll make it a clipping group just means I can't go outside of my lines so we'll do a little bit of shading it's only supposed to be a simple chibi so that's almost too pink might lower the opacity just a little bit and then I'll do this for as many layers as I need Um, we'll do our shading I'll finish this in real time just so you can see it's just simple shading but just so you can see me using the clipping layers
Anyway, now that I've very quickly finished off this chibi, I normally put like a white border around the outside. To do that, you can go back to our base layer if you've done it. There's another way to do it as well, um, but I'll show you this way. Then go selection from layer, create selection, then selection, expand. I usually do it by 20 pixels and make a layer underneath and fill it with white. You won't be able to see straight away, but if you get rid of the paper layer, you can see it's there. If you don't have the base layer, the other way you can do it, get another layer, go back to our auto select tool, click on the outside again. Obviously it's selecting the white that I have there even just, yeah. And then you can go invert, and then selection, expand, and there you go. That's another way you can do it. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful. Be sure to like and subscribe if you did. And for more videos every Mondays and Fridays. See ya!